tonight. From Lumen Field in Seattle. It's week three of the NFL on EA Sports. See Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks versus Jalen Hurts and the Cleveland Browns. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we, as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. They'll be led out by a Heisman runner-up during his college days. It's the versatile Jalen Hurts. And he's off to a fantastic start to the season. Already eight touchdown passes in just his first two weeks of the year. Now, I don't think that's a pace he's going to be able to sustain, but at the very least, he's got this offense humming here to start things out. On first and ten, it's Hurts. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Hurts on the move to his left. And he slings one that's incomplete. Yeah, good game catch the ball in the backfield a week ago. They're going to try and involve him in that way in this game as well. But you can tell scouting has taken over. They're making it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, defensively, they told us, hey, we've got to take him out of the passing game limp. And it looked like he got the feet down, did he? Yes, it's a catch. A big connection on that one. 35 yards. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Flush to his right. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Van Jefferson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. And his kick is no good. An inauspicious start here kicking-wise as this one stays a 6-0 game. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Here come the Seahawks. Time for that offense and quarterback Russell Wilson to go to work. I think his task in this game is really simple. Eliminate the turnovers. He threw two interceptions last week. I can't believe I led with that because he had three touchdown passes. Right, right. So there's a lot of good that he did. But he's got to take care of the ball better. The ball has to go to guys wearing the jerseys that they're wearing this week, not the opposition. They'll start by running the option to the lane. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, this defense for the Browns, very strong last week as they helped their squad improve to 2-0 and on the young season. And one of the key things you always look for when you're evaluating a defense is how opportunistic are they? How many takeaways do they get per game? And how about last week's game? That number, six. Absolutely phenomenal performance. They were on top of their game right from the first snap.
Robinson now off the option. The numbers in last week's ball game for Robinson. 14 carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. He's having a nice season, and he knows where he ranks in the league. Don't ever let a running back tell you that they don't know that. They do. So what he's doing now is lobbying the offensive coordinator all week long. Hey, how about a few more touches? He's one big game away from maybe leading the league. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. We ought to come up with a t-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. On second down, it's Robinson. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Browns territory. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. On third down, Wilson. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. On second down now, it's Robinson. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Six-nothing our score after one. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. They run. Robinson. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. They're going on fourth down. It's Wilson. Quick slant to Brown. Touchdown, Seahawks. A.J. Brown. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks are now just an extra point away from moving out in front. No problem there on the end. Taking it about the one. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Browns drive about to get started. 
After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. To throw again on second down. Hurts. Room to run inside the 40. And he's got some space here. And down to the 19-yard line. A big play that time on the catch and run. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be, because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Forced out to his left. That's to McCaffrey complete. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. Throwing again on second down. Hurts. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Van Jefferson. His second touchdown of the game, his third of the year. And once again, the Browns are back in front. Tucker now for the extra point. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. It's a wobbler, and it's intercepted. And it's a good return here as he'll get all the way up close to the 35. This will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Robinson now off the option. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Nice job there on the tackle, keep him to the short gain. And of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular, not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you, keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. From the shotgun, Wilson. And this is caught. It's Brown. Past the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Russell Wilson with two first half touchdown passes. And the Seahawks have once again taken the lead. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now two. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. This one fielded at the five. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. We have witnessed touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives. We'll see if the offense can continue this uptick here. And I know you're looking at me funny. You're wondering what... A fight for it, and this is caught. What a catch. A big play that time for Cleveland. How about the first half he's putting together? Well over 100 yards already with that last catch. And to me, they'd be well served to keep looking his way. A number of big plays already in this one. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Christian McCaffrey 
his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Browns on just two plays have taken the lead. This time, the extra point up and good. And the lead is up to five. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match than a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. And they finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 34. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now. We'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. Wilson's throw here into the hands of Jones. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Throwing again here, Wilson. A slant to Jones. And the Seahawks are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Now Wilson. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off. He's at the 50, 30, 10, 5. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Browns' defense has a touchdown. They were in a very good position to come up with a go-ahead score there. A really good drive. Instead, it turns into six points going the other way. Psychologically, I don't know what that's going to do to them. So as a coach, you're looking at that as at least a 10-point swing, right? Because they had the field goal in their back pocket. They certainly did, and you're right. At least a 10-point swing, maybe more. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts, as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson. First down now, but the clock continues to move. From the gun, it's Wilson. Over the middle, complete. It's Pearson. Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Play action. Here's Hertz. Eluding the pressure right. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. But first down, Hurts. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. 
So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you cross country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports halftime report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. From there, let's head west to see what's going on with the Raiders at home in Las Vegas. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting Baltimore Ravens. Najee Harris, well over 100 yards on the ground with a pair of touchdown runs. Finally, let's get to the desert to check on the Cardinals at home in Glendale. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Mac Jones, sharp in the victory as his guys bounce back from a tough start to the year to claim victory number one. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. The Seahawks trailing, but they will have possession first here as we resume action in the third quarter. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start coming back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. Throwing down, Wilson on first down. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Bobby McCain, and this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Hurt sets up to throw it. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Throwing his Hurts. Steps away to his left. That's caught. It's McCaffrey again. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So eight yards on the completion there, and that'll make it second down. They go play action with Hertz. Touchdown, Browns! Travis Kelsey, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead opens up now to 22 points. A drive there of just four plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. And yeah, the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw into the hands of the receiver, Chanel. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh, so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. On first down, Robinson. 
And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after him now. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. To throw is Wilson. Flushed out. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And this is picked up by the Browns. And a return across midfield and to the 46-yard line. Well, if these guys wanted to get back in this game, they needed an almost perfect second half and down three scores. A lost fumble here certainly doesn't fit into that plan. That reminds me of my plan in college to get an A on the papers I turned in, but that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> too many mistakes by both of us. <laughs> I mean, that's just pure and simple. And that's why that's exactly where they are in this ball game. They're going to need a huge turnaround if they want to try and win this one. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. To throw once more on second and 10. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Demario Davis coming in for the sack that time. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Sliding out of the pocket. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. It's a 15-yard pickup. But it'll lead to a fourth down. The passing game continues to be their friend. Even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles, they're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. They've been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson, and this one complete to Smith. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. Airing it out deep for Smith. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The Seahawks go for it, but can't convert. And now possession's going to go over with a football at the 20-yard line. Jalen Hurts in this offense trotting back out. And we have seen him to this point with four touchdowns. We get a glance at his work. It's been good work. Oh, it's been excellent work, and it's made so much better by our guys. Look at that montage of great <laughs> plays that they put together. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you speak it pretty well. 
But these guys, the pictures they put up, awesome. Oh. Very good, and he's got his team in the lead right now. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Tyler Lockett, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave him great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain, so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. Now here's a throw that's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Well, this game is certainly pretty well over. They can go ahead and mark it in the win column. But as a defense, they don't want to get so soft now that everybody just throws the ball all over the place against them, gets big yardage, and puts points on the board. They have pride, too, on that side of the ball. To throw again on second down. Wilson over the middle. He's got Chanel. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 45-yard line. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. The first down screen pass, good for five. Again, Wilson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. Pat Smith. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They face a third down now as they try to find a late. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off. And the Browns force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. The utter domination here just continues. This defense, I don't know what more we can say all around about their performance. Well, it certainly feels in this game like maybe they're facing a Canadian defense. 12 guys on the field. <laughs> it feels like there's an extra on every snap because they have really struggled to make headway through the air. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. <laughs> well, partner, nothing but praise for me for this offense. They have been tremendous all night long. They knew what they had to do to unlock the defense. And let's face it, this has been a master class in offensive football that we've been here to witness. Hurts throw pulled in by Jefferson. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. So they still get the completion, even though the blitz was on. But the blitz got there. Does that stay in the mind of the quarterback the next couple plays? That's what you're hoping for. That's what you're planning for. Yeah, it's a little risk-reward, right? You're leaving your guys on an island back there in man coverage. But you take the chance that you get to the quarterback, and so he gets completion here. Congratulations. Keep coming at him, and hopefully it pays off by the end of the game that you're starting to get to him while still able to cover on the back end. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. And Kevin Stefanski going to take a chance going for it on fourth. They'll run for it. McCaffrey. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. 
Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. And he's got this down to the 35. On first and 10, it's Wilson. That's going to be caught. It's Chanel. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Now it's Wilson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. The line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. Now Wilson. And this is incomplete. Third and goal, trying to make that scoreboard at least a little more respectable. Here's Wilson. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes. You can read his hands. And you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Browns drive about to get started. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. <laughs> yes, get out of there. That one looks like he'll throw here. Complete the tight end, Kelsey. And I think the ball's out, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And that will write a finish to this ball game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points, allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Browns, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they will head home next week to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Meanwhile, for Seattle, they'll fall to 1-2. And, and they'll try to rebound next week as they head to the me